Fora TV. The world is thinking. Now, this social aspect of ants is what makes them so attractive to us as humans. And maybe there's a few things we could learn from them. And that is one aspect of tonight's event is to go into African Hall and actually come with your problems and get advice from ants' perspective, from our ant experts. After all, they've been solving problems for 100 million years. One of those problems was feeding. Now, as I said before, ants invented cattle herding. We did not. They tend insects like aphids and mealybugs. In fact, now these ants are running away with them because I disturbed the leaf. But there they are, protecting them, and they actually lick them and get yummy sugar from their excretions. Here's our local ant, the Argentine ant, which is an invasive ant that destroys the native ants. Here, getting sugar and energy from a local mealybug. Another amazing ant. Do you hear that? It's the army ants. Army ants are these wonderful ants that drive through the rainforest like a wo leaderless wolverine pack, eating everything in its way. They are special because they actually eat everything, and they eat so much that they have to keep moving night after night. They form these nests, weaving their bodies together like a fabric, like a scarf, and inside there is the queen, the eggs, the larva, and the next day they move somewhere else, eating everything and then and going. But I had this brilliant idea. Let's bring these ants to San Francisco. And recently, we put on an exhibit. And in principle, I just had to make sure I got the queen and everything would be okay because she, needs to, she produces lots and lots of eggs. So I had this idea. I'd go to Home Depot, get a vacuum cleaner, fly to Costa Rica, and suck up the ants in my little shop vac and bring them back. Well, it was a lot harder than, harder than that, but it did work. We had a quarter million ants on display for a year. They ate 25,000 crickets a day. So think of that before you get one of these. Um, it was actually quite difficult to get them on the airline. In fact, when I was checking in at uh, American Airlines, they said, um, oh, we've canceled your ticket. I'm like, what? See, I had this big white drum with me. <laughs> Inside there was this thing going, woof, woof. They were just circling. And there was like this monster in there. And they said, we've canceled your ticket. I said, why? They said, well, we heard you're carrying army ants. I said, who said that? And, <laughs> and um, we read on the internet that um, army ants could kill a horse. I said, there's no horses on the airplane. <laughs> and they, uh, but then I went over to this uh, Costa Rican airline. They said, oh, cool, army ants. I had some in my backyard. Go ahead. And um, <laughs> made it here just fine. Another amazing ant that you can't talk about ants without thinking about, we have them on display in the rainforest bulla, is the leafcutter ant. Now, these ants, like an electric turkey knife, vibrate through the leaves, pick up that leaf and dash home, but what do they do with it? They eat more leaves per colony than an elephant does. They eat more leaves than any other insect. They're the number one herbivore in South America, and they live underground. And what do they do with those leaves? They invented farming. Ants invented farming 50 million years ago. They take the leaves and feed a fungus. It's a one-on-one -on -one relationship between one species of ant, and there's over 100 of these fungus growers, and about 100 species of fungi. And it's great to go look at that exhibit here at the Cal Academy. And it's impressive to think that they're almost growing a monoculture of a fungus. And they do it in a very special way. And if we think we need to grow monocultures, I think we have something to learn from ants.